No. No, no. It's not fair. It didn't happen. I hate him. I hate them. I don't believe that. Don't you dare come in here. I never want to see you again. Go away. I don't believe that either. Then I'll prove it. How much proof do you need? Why do you think I brought all your wives and mistresses here? To show me how much I'd hurt you. And you did. I thought they'd be on my side. Somehow it didn't work out. Now I just want you out of here this instant. Bobby? Bobby! Look. Don't you touch me. If you lay a hand on me, I'll have you arrested. Delia, in a way, I'm glad you know it all. I didn't much like that scene in there. What didn't you like about it? They're all still crazy about you. Good old lying, cheating Barry. They actually defended you. Somehow I was wrong. I've never been so humiliated in my life. I'm sorry. Will you just get out of my life? Not until you listen. No, I'll never listen to you again. I've needed never. Women. I hate you. I've tried I to change, you. but Nothing I never bad could. Not until to now. Go away. Whatever it is you give me, it's enough. More than enough. I'm complete. I'll never need any woman but Delia Reed. That's a lie. No, that's the God's honest truth. I'd rather be dead. Dead. Well, we're right. You're going to be real sorry. No. 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 It didn't happen. It's not fair. I hate him. I hate them. I don't believe that. Don't you dare come in here. Go away. I never want to speak to you again. I don't believe that either. Then I'll prove it. How much proof do you need? Why do you think I brought all your wives and mistresses here? To show me how much I'd hurt you. And you did. I thought they'd be on my side. Only it didn't work. And I want you out of my sight. This minute! Bobby! Bobby! Don't touch me. If you lay a hand on me, I'll have you arrested. Delia, in a way, I'm glad you know it all. I didn't much like that scene there. Oh, well, what didn't you like about it? They're all still crazy about you. Good old lying, cheating Barry. They actually defended you and somehow I was wrong. I've never been so humiliated. I'm sorry. Will you get out of my life? Not till you listen. I'm never going to listen I've to you again. I've needed women. Never. I hate you. I've done you. the best I could. I I've tried to change, you. but I never could for long. Nothing Not bad enough could ever happen to you. What Go away! What you give me is enough. More than enough. I'm complete. I'll never need any woman but Delia Reed. It's a lie. No. That's the God's honest truth. I'd rather be dead. Dead! We're right for each other. You're going to be real sorry. And when that contract comes in, make sure it's sent directly to Mrs. Woodward's office. I don't want anyone around here getting a look at it before she does. Oh, well, if there are any objections or problems, you can refer them to me. Okay. Great. Hi. Afternoon. Where's Mother? At the office. She's having a meeting. How are you? Oh, terrible. Yeah? Do you really want to hear? I mean, something about me wouldn't bore you? Kim, what's the matter? My husband just dismissed me from his office. That's what's the matter. Like I was some orderly he didn't want to bother with. I guess he was busy. He wasn't busy. He was mean. No casting agent ever gave me a better brush off. Kim, what's going on? 
It's my replacement, Connie Markham. Oh. She was so awful to me today. She treats me like I'm not there, Michael. Like you're unimportant? She looks right through me. I, I, I humiliated myself trying to get her to be civil because I know I have to make her like me or she might want me replaced. Did that work? I got a smile, finally. I hate her. Well, it sounds to me as if you're doing very good. You think so? The political thing to do is win her over. That's what you're doing. That's great. That makes me feel so much better. <laughs> I am doing it right. Sure. How did I know you were the person I should talk to? I thought you were looking for your mother. That was just an excuse. Oh. There's some sort of big investigation going on at the hospital, and it was all Seneca could do to even let me in the door. Kim, I'm sure that he's busy and has He was being self-important. You know, he loves being the head of the department and having everyone have to come to him. I bet he'd like them to kneel. Well, running things is a bit of a turn-on. Just passing along your mother's instructions and directions is enough for me. It's a big deal. You're not like Seneca. You're not so wrapped up in every little blood test that you haven't time for the people in your life. I'm not sure I'm the one you should be talking to about your husband. Well, who else can I complain to? Mother will only say, I told you so. Maybe the best thing to do would be to give him the benefit of the doubt. I have, and it didn't do any good. Kim, will you sit down, please, on the couch? Why? Just sit down, please. OK, sure. You know, you're very good looking when you're angry. Will you cut it out? <laughs> well, who else can I come on to? Anyone. It's because I still like you, even if I am an old married lady. Old married ladies shouldn't go around behaving like that. They should go home and fix dinner for their fat, hard-working husbands. We send out mostly. Cooking has never been very high on my list of priorities. Well, maybe under these special circumstances you can make an mm -hmm. exception. Is that what you think I should do? Yeah. I'll do it then. Because I know you're really smart and only want what's good for me. Kim. Don't worry, Michael. Just a quick peck on the cheek. Well? I'm sorry, I got the days mixed up. For whatever reason, you decided you didn't want me to go to Connecticut with George. That's right. I'd like to know why. I didn't like him. You didn't like George. Mrs. Woodard, there are some things I don't need to learn much about. I'm sure. But in this case, that means? I know that guy. Not him, but guys like him. He's smart. He's tough, and he's moving fast. You don't believe he was raised in Connecticut with a stable full of horses? He's from the streets, like me. All right. Suppose he is from the streets. <clears throat> What's your objection to that? He's on the make. He's looking out for number one. He'll sell you out soon as look at you. That's a rather harsh assessment. I don't think you should trust him. I don't think he should be trusted with anything as sensitive as labor negotiations, not with the time of day. The issue at hand has nothing to do with labor negotiations. He was asking me to go horseback riding. You're too classy a lady for a guy like that. Suppose I don't think so. Suppose that I am fully aware of who and what he is, and that he was coming on to me, and that that was precisely what I wanted him to do. Then maybe I was out of line. I just thought, since I'm your administrative assistant, that means I'm supposed to make suggestions from time to time. That's true. Why would you want to get involved with a guy like that, anyway? I am a widow without any romantic attachments. <laughs> yeah, but However, George However, I am not yet at the point in my life where I am content to sit in my rocking chair and watch television and contemplate the idea of grandchildren. No, but that's not Moreover, what I mean, either. Moreover, I find it extremely beneficial on several levels to combine business with pleasure. Well, if I put my foot in it, I'm sorry. All you have to do is explain to me the things you want me to stay out of. It's all right, Michael. Actually, I had no intention of accepting his invitation. 
You didn't. Of course not. But do you think if I had, your objecting would have stopped me? No. <laughs> you're not only bright and straightforward, you're extremely perceptive. Oh, well, thank you. In this occasion, you just didn't have enough information. But I must admit I'm touched that you were so concerned about me. As long as I wasn't out of line. If it makes you feel any better, I've already come to the same conclusion about George Wolfe as you have. And he is in the process of being gracefully eased from my employ. Yeah? <laughs> I may amuse myself, Michael, but I try not to be foolish. Oh, uh, I should have realized you knew what you were doing. This has been an interesting situation. I'm impressed. Today was the first time you met George. Well, I've talked to him before on the phone. He can never even remember my name, much less anything else. Nevertheless, today was the first time you actually put eyes on him. And you sized him up very accurately. Thank you. I think it's interesting how similar our reactions are to people. I think I'm very fortunate to have you around. I need to invite one last guest. The party's not important. We are. We haven't made love since forever. Honey, don't you miss me? Yes. Yes, I do. Very, very much. Well, you know, you're scaring me just a bit. Why? You're pulling back. You have been for a while. I'm nervous. That's what I keep telling myself, but... Dee, are we in trouble? No, we're not in trouble. I'm not. I I mean... You mean we'll be married soon. Why else would I be throwing this party for you? I don't know. Look, I'm really exhausted. I hardly slept last night. Could I have some details about the party? Who's coming? Everybody. It's a surprise party. Well, I'm afraid I won't be very surprised. Oh, yes. You will be. <laughs> Not surprised that there's a party, but... Surprised by other things at the party? Presents and things? Look, Barry, I have to uh, go. You know what? What? I love you. Thank you. You're welcome. And wherever your head is at, it's okay. I want to sleep with you today, but if... If that's not possible, then I'll find other things to do. And other people to see? Mm hmm Ken, for one. Of course. I just want you to remember this. I'm just one phone call away. You can depend on me, lean on me, with whatever you want, whenever you're ready. That's very kind. Kind? Well, what do you want what, Like I'm doing say? you some good deed or something? Hey, you. I'm going to be your husband. You're going to be my wife. I wish I was going to be your first. Well, I've forgotten my first. It'll be so much better this time. The second time? Yeah, the second time around. You're the only woman I'll ever want. <laughs> you better not say that. You never know. Delia, I know. Tell me you know. I know. Okay. Well, then bring on your party. We'll have the reception before the wedding. I can't wait. Neither can I. Making sure the power gets to your home is a bit more complicated than just flipping the switch. That's why DPNL is creating new community service centers and moving them closer to where you work and live. The centers give you a source to answer all your energy questions, and they let us provide our energy in a way that will help you most beneficially. They put us one step closer to you. Oh, it's all right. Is he in there? Yes, we talked and everything. Hey, been... without me? Even with me, we He's agreed not, not to... He's not going to prosecute. He said so explicitly, and he meant it. Look, let's just sit down. 
I feel like I'm about to fall over. You know, when's the last time you ate? I'm tired, that's all. Look, I haven't been drinking anymore. I don't drink anymore. So, tell me. Well, first Roger came to the house. We had quite a session. It was pretty ugly. No, I was ugly. He was gentle and concerned, like a vulture. <laughs> Maybe that's unfair. I... No, the hell that's unfair. Well, he wanted the tape, and I teased and didn't give it to him. I wasn't very nice. But then he wasn't very nice to let my husband die. Vengeance. I ought to just let go of it. The fact is, Roger made an error in medical judgment, then falsified hospital records, and the one who paid was the patient. So don't waste time on Roger. Go on about Barry. Well, when I left Roger, the adrenaline was pumping, and suddenly I knew where to go from there. Barry, first thing tonight, and then Marshall Westheimer, first thing tomorrow. Marshall? Well, not to report, Roger. Well, you never know. Primarily, I wanted to enroll myself in that new ARR program, Alcoholic Rehabilitation Research. I think I'd be fun to research. You'd be super. That's a terrific idea. It feels good to me. Where was I with Barry? Well, let's take it again from the top. When we find some place darker, with food. Oh, God, that would be nice. Lobster. Does that mean Long Island? Yeah, and it's starting to rain. Are you game? Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> Good to leave here. I've been famished. here all day. Yeah, me too. Roger. Well, that's not what I came to find out, but it sure is interesting. It, it's all right. Is he in there? Yes. We talked. Faith, without me? Even with me, we He's agreed not, not to He's not going to prosecute. He said so explicitly, and he meant it. Come on, let's sit down. I feel like I'm about to fall over. And when's the last time you ate? I'm tired, that's all. I haven't been drinking. I don't drink anymore. So, tell me. Well, first Roger came to the house. We had quite a session. It was ugly. I was ugly. He was gentle, concerned, like a vulture. Maybe it's unfair. Well, the hell it's he unfair. He wanted the tape. I teased and then I didn't give it to him. It wasn't very nice. But he wasn't very nice to let my husband die. Vengeance. I ought to let go of it. Look, the fact is, Roger made an error in medical judgment. And he falsified hospital records, and the one who wound up paying was the patient. So don't waste any time worrying about Roger. But go on about Barry. Well, by the time I finished with Roger, the adrenaline was pumping. And then I knew where to go from there. First to Barry tonight, mm -hmm. and then to Marshall Westheimer first thing tomorrow. Marshall. Well, not to report Roger. Well, you never know. Mm -hmm. But primarily, I, went, I want to enroll myself in the new ARR program, Alcoholic Re Rehabilitation Research. <laughs> I think I'd be fun to research. Oh, uh, you'd be super. That's a terrific idea. It feels good to me. Where was I about with Barry? Well, let's take it again from the top. When we find a place a little darker, maybe with some food. Oh, that would be nice. Lobster. Does that mean Long Island? Yeah, and it's starting to rain. Are you game? Are you kidding? <laughs> well, come on. <laughs> <laughs> <You're a lobster. laughs> yeah, it's been <laughs> Well, Roger, I hadn't expected to hear that. 
That's very interesting. Well, that's that. Thanks, Terry. Uh, you're not going anywhere till we get this new scene right. Oh, it didn't work for you? Not for a minute. It was as if you'd never been in love before. There was no reality at all. Oh, you mean like our love scenes when we were going together? Well, as a matter of fact, yes. Well, Terry, that wasn't reality. That was fantasy. That was me waiting for you to settle down and make a commitment. Well, I have made a commitment, and so have you. To the picture. Oh, all right, Mr. Dictator. Or is it Mr. Director? Look, the less time I spend alone with you, the better. Let's just take it from the top, okay? Well, how do you expect me to get in the mood? Well, there's a wonderful new invention. They call it acting. Come on, sit. Oh, you are so funny. Okay. <laughs> Darling, I never dreamed it could be like this. And you'll never know how much I care about you. I've never met a man so kind and so gentle, so... I know. And I need you, too. <laughs> oh, come on, Terry. This is so old-fashioned. No woman would all right. ever say that. All right, all right, all right. Um, tell me in your own words. You just met the love of your life. So how would you do it? What would you say? Okay. I knew I had to tell you how I felt the moment that I met you. Since I've never felt so important and so, so cared for and so loved. I feel like nothing in my life can go wrong now that I've met you. We have something really special and I think that you feel it too. What I'm stumbling around and trying to say is that I think I'm in love with you. Well, all right. That was a lot better this time. I want to know what you did that time that you weren't doing before. Well, I guess I was thinking about the first time that we met. But that was a long time ago. Aside from Maeve and me seeing you in the syringe, has everyone else you've been talking to these last weeks about how Ken went in an overdose and was begging help for, from them? I know you went to see Seneca. There must be staff who overheard. It's probably over the whole hospital by now. Ken was famous. You're known over there because of me and, and Dad and Faith. I'm known at Riverside because I was that hospital's attorney for five years. I am an attorney, Roger, a professional when it comes to the law. I know exactly how much trouble I'm in. I'm working on my defense, and maybe you have time to sit around sucking your thumb, but I don't. Good night. I'm sorry. Did you come to tell me not to represent myself? Yes. Well, don't. Jack couldn't change my mind. Frank couldn't. Don't. Frank? I went to see Maeve because what she thinks of me is very important. Instead, I got what Frank thinks of me, which is not important. I'm sorry. Yeah. But let me suggest not to waste time and emotional energy worrying about what Maeve Ryan thinks of you. She loves you. You can count on her, always. What you do have to worry about is how you're going to convince a jury that you're not guilty of some big premeditated mercy killing. Of course, you're a professional. But you're also the defendant in this case, and you'd have to split yourself in half to carry something like this off. You need a lawyer who's objective, not emotional, not involved. It's a matter of all. switching gears. I know how. Oh, you know how to be superhuman? Oh, stop! I'm not denying my feelings. I grieve for Ken and everything else I've lost. I can never be the same, and that wouldn't hurt so damned much if I were superhuman. Roger, you've been very good to me. You went all the way to Maine, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. 
Don't make me fight you now. Think about Maine. You signed under a false name at the hospital. You said you were going to Canada. You ran away to New York. I'm not fighting. I'm saying that the evidence against you is overwhelming and you're all worried about whether or not Maeve Ryan still loves you. Jillian, let me hire a legal gun for you, please. The one thing about all this that surprises me is how much Maeve's opinion matters. Well, what's Maeve or anyone else supposed to think? Now, you made yourself the only logical suspect. Unless someone comes along and magically... Unless someone magically confesses and clears me? Yeah, well, I wish that were a real possibility. But you don't need it. Now, you can get off this thing without a sentence and put it all right behind you if you just have the right lawyer. Okay, now I'll find him for you. I'll pay his fee. I have to do this. Why? Roger. Do you think I gave that injection to Ken? There are many reasons why I won't answer that. But what's important is that I love you, and I'm damned if I'm going to let you send yourself to prison. That isn't going to happen. Hello, my name is Michael Fry. Oh, <laughs> I guess you're, I'm what you might call an absent-minded professor. But then that's why I'm perfect to tell you about a new idea at Chase, the monthly CD account. You see, Chase makes it easier to keep track of when your CDs come due by sending you a statement every month, like, um, well, like this one. See, it lists all my CDs, their due dates, uh, how much interest I've earned. A very commendable idea. The Chase Monthly CD Account, an idea you can bank on. Hello, my name is Michael Fry. Oh, I guess I'm what you might call an, an absent-minded professor. But then that's why I'm perfect to tell you about the new idea at Chase, the monthly CD account. You see, Chase makes it easier to keep track of when your CDs come due by sending you a statement every month, like, uh, well, like this one. See, it lists all my CDs, their due dates, how much interest I've earned, a very commendable idea. The Chase Monthly CD Account, an idea you can bank on. Even if you are a little absent-minded. <laughs>